What's going on guys, KN4MKB Billy here, and today we are talking about some more digital ham radio. So, last year, you know that we did the WinMore protocol over WinLink to send emails back and forth. Well, as of the 10th of July 2020, that is gone, and I didn't know it until somebody actually commented on the video and told me it didn't work. So, the new protocol that we're going to be using is called RDOP, the Amateur Radio Digital Open Protocol. It has been in production since 2015, so it is pretty much made to be a replacement for Winmore and other sound card type uh, packet uh, packet systems. So it's going to be more, it's going to be faster, it's going to be more robust, and this is all around better performing. I've got to uh, try it out here for a little bit, and from what I can tell, it does uh, establish connections quite a bit easier than Winmore. So I'm pretty excited about getting into this and showing you guys. If you haven't watched my sound card video about automatic level control, I do recommend you check that out. If you don't have a ham radio that has a built-in sound card, it's really helpful for these types of things. Make sure you get your audio levels right. And I do recommend that you turn up your radio just a little bit to hear yourself while you do this, or actually hear the other station, so you make sure you're making a connection. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. We're not going to start, start from very scratch. I'm not going to show you the details of how to set up WinLink because it's relatively easy. So the first thing you need to do is actually go download WinLink. And let's go ahead and just roll over to the computer here so you guys can see what I'm doing. So the link, the link for WinLink will be down below, but basically you just need to go on the website, hit the download button, and just download the program. All right, so user programs, and uh, you're going to download WinLink Express, right? So you're going to install that, and once you do, uh, you're going to come up with a... Uh, registration screen and that's the first thing you need to do or the second thing you need to do uh, is basically just register your account and that's going to get you an email address that you can use with the WinLink system and uh, just get you into the system there's not much to see here uh, it's a basic email client uh, so up here you have your settings uh, some different settings I don't really mess around with it too much to be honest you can create new messages and reply to others here you can uh, see your attachments that you've receive from other people and what we're paying attention to here for right now is going to be open session so uh, and of course you have your inbox and your red items and outbox and all that fun stuff over here and you have your incoming emails it's basic email if you've ever used the email before so the first thing I'm going to show you is actually the telnet so telnet when link is literally just IP right so you're just literally connecting to a server over your internet assuming you have it and it's just a quick way to get your emails or send out emails if you have them and you have access to the internet but that's not the point of WinLink is it so the point of WinLink if you don't know already is basically to send radio uh, send email over HF so or any other message really uh, so I want to show you guys how to set up RDOP which is a new protocol because we need to replace the old video right so it's, it's pretty self-explanatory, and it's basically the same system. So you're just going to choose this drop down here and choose RDOP, right? And you're going to hit Open Session. And it's going to pop up this window here, and uh, we're going to need to configure a little bit of settings. And like I said before, make sure you know how to use the sound card. Uh, it's better to get those basics out of the way now than to try to deal with uh, what will happen later if you don't. So the first thing you'll want to do once you actually open up the RDOP WinLink session is go to your settings and go to your TNC setup. And here you're going to be inputting your capture device for your, your microphone and your playback device for your speaker, which is our data in and out for a radio, right? Uh, the drive level is actually going to be your power level on your radio. And this is something that you may have to play around with. I tend to be between 50 and 100 because uh, 100 will make my ALC kick in and 50 is this a good level for me and that's something you'll have to play around with too so once you start transmitting pay attention to your radio and make sure you're not overdriving your radio and make sure you're transmitting at a power that you want to and not under right so all of these things of course with the sound card have to be played around with just a little bit to get it working the way you want it to so the next thing you want to do is go to radio setup now you don't actually need a push to talk line to get this running but I really advise that you do or, or compromise on and unfortunately right now push to talk is one of those right so I keep mine on manual none of this stuff really applies to me because I'm not using any type of serial port or a push to talk but if you guys have that I really 
or you can get it, I really suggest you do that because it's really going to help your performance and it's going to help you not interfere with other people while you're transmitting if other sounds decide to come through your speaker. So once you have that set up, you can do a transmit level test and you can look at your radio. But I myself uh, have found that it is not the same as when I'm connecting to other people. So I watch when I connect to other people and then I can tell. Now, whenever you set up your WinLink, uh, it's going to ask you for your grid square. And what that's used for is actually finding the best stations to connect to. So if you hit your channel selection here, it's going to automatically download the channel selection from the internet if available. If you don't have internet, you, if you can connect to one of these without getting the list, then you can actually download that list. But I have internet now, so it's downloaded the list for me, and it shows the most... You can organize it by the most... Uh, highest probability of success making that connection. So, I found that uh, I had to go through a few of these and try them out, right? And and that's another thing you usually have to play with with these things. You might, even if everything's green and it looks good to go, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a good connection because they could be in the right spot, but not the right polarization antenna. They could be down in a valley somewhere. You never know, right? So sometimes you have to play with these things. And I found this connection right here usually works pretty well for me. So once you find one or you want to experiment with one, what you'll do is click on it, right? And it's going to load your settings here. It's going to call the call sign, the center frequency, the dial frequency, bearing, and quality. So what we want a radio set to if you don't have that cat control set up is your dial frequency, right? So my radio, I'm looking at it, it's at 7.064.50. That's correct. Another thing that you want to make sure is that you're in some type of data mode. If not, you're at least in upper sideband because all these data modes uh, around this region are in uh, USB. Uh, those are the two main factors that you need to make sure of here. You also want to turn off any type of weird noise cancelization, noise blanking. Um, you, you want all of that in there because some of these digital modes, uh, it sounds like noise because it's not voice to some of these, progr uh, these programs that filter some of that stuff out. So just disable all your noise blanking and, and make sure that uh, you don't have any weird DSP stuff going on there. So once you have that done, the next thing you want to do is just try to establish the connection. So to do that, you'll just simply click start. And you, you guys may hear my radio clicking. It clicks when it starts to transmit. Um, but my radio is going to transmit here. I'm going to turn it up to see if I can't start hearing it. And you're also going to see a waterfall here. And this waterfall will actually show you the signals too. Those blanks are when I'm transmitting. Uh, the noise here is the radio's just noise coming through. I've noticed with this node, it takes a minute. There we go. So you guys probably see it on the screen here. This is actually the signal coming in. I'm going to turn up the radio and see if you guys can hear this. Okay, so actually... I have some noise cancelization going on in my audio recording, and I think it's completely blanking everything out. I, th I guess that's a good thing for me, but not so much for you guys on the video. Yeah, it doesn't look like the audio is coming through. That's fine. So you're going to see an update here of your current session, and it's just going to populate with information telling you what is going on, right? So it, it tells me I've connected. Uh, it shows my bearing. Sometimes it shows distance. Uh, it shows how much time you have left on this current connection to this node. Uh, and all while this is going on, you're still going to get that waterfall display uh, to kind of show your connection quality and get an idea of what it looks like. I like to, like I said, I like to have my radio turned up just a little bit so I can hear it because then I, I get a good idea of the, sh the station's strength. If it's weak and fading out, then I know that maybe I should look for another node. All right, so not much happened there. So now we're going to go back and actually send a message out, and we're going to send a message to my WinLink email. So to do a new message, we're just going to hit new message here. And we're going to send this to kn4mkb at themodernham.com. Subject, we're just going to bit test email. And... And put testing the WinLink email system, right? Nice and simple. And now we're going to post this to the outbox, right? Because we've got to open sessions before we can actually send messages. We're not using the internet. 
So that's in our outbox. And as soon as we establish a connection, that's going to go out. So once we establish this connection, it should send our email and we should receive the email I sent to myself. So I'm going to go ahead and start this session and we should see a lot more activity on the screen here. And we'll also see a lot more activity with our little waterfall display once it gets up and running. All right, so there's our signal coming in. And once again, if you do have a push to talk system, it's going to be a lot easier on you. Uh, it's going to it's just going to be a lot more efficient. So I really suggest you set that up if you don't have one already. That's something I really need to do. Oh, well this right here is actually our email. You guys can't see it because my webcam came on. But this is our email that I just sent myself testing the WinLink system. This message was sent from Amateur Radio account. It adds this on just to make sure if you're, you're sending email to somebody that doesn't know any better, they know that... Uh, there's a little bit more rules and regulations they need to watch out for. But real quick, I also want to show you guys uh, the grid file request. So this is kind of cool too. If you live in a remote region, you can actually request weather data, uh, weather maps in the form of a grid file. You also need software to run that. I'm using ZGrib, and I'll put a download link for that down below too. But I'm just going to show you guys a quick example of that in action as well. So you'll uh, request the grid file, and you're going to select the region, and you're going to kind of select uh, what you want to see. So I'm going to say um, rain, waves, and wind uh, for the next uh, one day and one hour. So I'm going to hit post request, and just like an email, it's going to go in my outbox, right? And so I'm going to make that connection to RDOP, and it's going to send this request out to the servers, right, that handle this stuff. And that's step one. So the servers are going to get this request, and they're going to compile that data for me, and then they're going to send it back to my Win, uh, my WinLink email address with the grid file that we can open. This could be useful if you're on out in sea or something, and you actually don't have access to the internet, but you would like to know what the weather is. So you can send the request for these files in certain regions to see if it's going to rain over the next few days, um, and you'll be able to open that up. And, and check that thing out. So that's a pretty neat little feature too. If you're if you're living remotely and you're actually using this uh, to access the internet and outside uh, information, but I'm just going to show you guys a real quick demo of that. All right. So now that that email is sent, which is just a request for this grid file, now we're going to reconnect to the WinLink node and receive that grid file. And that could take a little while because this is like dial-up speeds, right? It's really slow. Uh, but it's over radio, it's over HF, and it could be thousands of miles away, which is really neat. So uh, we're going to go ahead and reconnect to this. If the, the message is ready, we're going to know. It's going to let us know, uh, and it's going to take a little while to receive. So I will see you guys when we get done receiving that file, and we're going to open it up and just check it out. All right, so we have received our email, and I'm just going to go over back to the inbox, and as you can see, I have one new message that's under red. I'm going to double-click that to open it. And this has just got some information about the coordinates and uh, uh, some of the, the stuff that we requested that's encoded in the message. And so I'm going to hit View Attachments, and this is our grid file. I'm actually going to save this to my desktop, and I'm going to open that... Uh, Zygrib, Zy Zygrib. Once again, the download link is going to be below. Uh, and this program is just going to allow us to open that file and visually see what data is in there. So I'm going to open this up. And uh, as you can see, we have uh, like the wind forecast. And we can actually drag this over uh, over time to see how things change. And that's just a really, really cool little feature of the program. But as for WinLink, uh, there's not much more to it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like the video and comment down below what you think. Anyways, 73 to you. Thanks for watching.